Welcome back once again to another episode of CAD Jungle. Today we're going to be making this pressure plate. All right, let's hop right to it. First things first, let's go ahead and create a new component. We're going to make it a good habit of creating new components for everything we model, even if it's one piece. Good habit to get into. I'm going to label this pressure plate. Okay, let's start a sketch. And let's put that on the top plane. All right, let's use the center diameter circle. And let's go ahead and dimension this and make this about 128 millimeters. All right, now the sketch is fully defined. Let's go ahead and finish the sketch. Let's use the extrude command. And let's make this about seven millimeters in thickness. And click OK. All right. Let's create another sketch on the top face. We're going to be creating a series of circles. All right. First things first, let's start at the center with a center diameter circle. And the first circle we're going to create, it's going to be about 25 millimeters. All right, let's create a second circle. Let's make that 75 millimeters. Okay, now let's go ahead and offset that circle a negative five millimeters. All right, let's go ahead and create a construction line because we're going to use this as a tool to basically uh, measure where we want to start another circle. So let's make this about 35 millimeters. Okay. Let's create an additional circle and we're going to start at the point right here where the line uh, ends. Actually, let's go ahead and turn off the construction line first. Then let's go to center diameter circle. We're going to make this 27 millimeters. Okay. All right, let's clean this up a little bit so it's easier to see. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and finish the sketch. We got our profiles there. All right. Next, I'm going to use the extrude tool and extrude this profile. I'm going to select that as well. I want to extrude it about 12 millimeters. Click OK. All right. I'm going to use the extrude tool again. But we need to turn back on the other profile again. Go back to sketches. I'm going to extrude this profile as well. And we're just going to select the back and it'll cut to the other side. Click OK. All right. We're going to use the fillet command. We're going to fillet this edge, this edge, this edge, this edge, this edge, and the back edge. And we're going to make them all two millimeters. OK. All right. Next. We're going to use the extrude command and we're going to extrude this profile as well. Make sure we select the entire profile. All right. And we want to extrude this about 30 millimeters. We don't want it to cut. We want it to join. Click OK. All right. We can turn that sketch off. OK. What we want to do now is create a sketch on this top face of the cylinder we have right here. We're going to use the center diameter circle. We're going to hover over until we find this circle right here in the center. Left click drag. We're going to make this 15 millimeters. All right. Next. I'm going to finish the sketch and use the extrude command, or you could just simply use the extrude command while you're in the sketch. Either way, select this profile and simply select the back face and it'll give you the cut operation and click OK. 
All right. Now, we want to use the fillet command to give us some fillets. All right. So we're going to select this edge, this edge, this edge here. This edge is going to loop. Make sure chain is, uh, tangent chain is selected. This edge and this edge. And then last but not least, the bottom edge here. I'm going to make it two millimeters. Okay. I forgot one edge. We need to select the outer edge as well. All right. There we go. All right. And just as a reference, to make sure you selected all the edges, you should have about 12 edges selected. Okay. All right. Now, what we want to do is create a circular pattern so we can get six of these all the way around. So we use the pattern, circular pattern tool. We're going to select features. Okay. And this is what we're going to select. This extrusion, this extrusion, and this fillet. Okay. Select the axis. You can either select this blue line, which is the Z axis, or you can select the inside. Okay. So we'll select the Z axis. We want to make the count or the quantity six. Click OK. All right. Now, let's go ahead and give it a color. So typically for pressure plates, I mean, I mean, they're different types, but we're going to make this a cast iron. So just type in cast here. And drag it over. And there you have it. We can get rid of this one. Unassign and delete. Now, it's pretty bumpy right now. So we can actually decrease that. I'm going to drag it down and bring it about 34. All right. Now, I got a special treat for you today. Today, we're going to render this. Okay. All right. So what we do is we go over here. And we select the render tool. All right. And you can see that it looks almost true to life. So let's look at some parameters here. We've already got the appearance set up. Now let's go up for the scene settings. First things first, let's go to the environment library. I like to use warm light. And you can go to many different websites and you can actually um, import your own HDRIs. But for this, let's just use the uh, built-in uh, HDRIs. So we'll use warm light. Double click on it and warm light select it. Okay. All right. Now, what we want to do is look at some other parameters. Let's go to settings. I like to keep it, you know, basic 1000 uh, for brightness. Position wise, you can change the positions of the lights. For ground scale, I'm going to turn off flat and ground. Okay. But I can move and rotate the lights around how I want it based on reflection, which gives me the better reflection. Okay. And again, whatever you see fit to do, preference wise, you can set it up that way. Okay. Now we can look at roughness and roughness comes into play. And I'll show you in a second when you actually uh, use an in canvas render render. Sorry. So focal length, I typically like to use a 96 millimeter focal length. Okay. And exposure is pretty good. Depth of field. I like to use depth of field because depth of field will basically give you that blur effect when things are in the background and you can set it up accordingly. Okay. And I like to turn my blur down. So how we're going to, we're going to do this real time once we turn on in canvas render and we're going to do this now. Word of caution. If you do not have a, a high end PC, it's going to take a while to do this. So you can still try it out if you'd like. It just may take a little bit longer. All right, let's turn on in canvas remember. All right, I'm gonna turn off this position right here. All right, and as you can see, with the depth of field, it's actually somewhat blurry. And this is basically the focal point right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off depth of field and you'll see that nothing is blurry. Everything's crisp. Turn back on depth of field. I'm gonna move this point about right here somewhere, okay? 
I'm going to slowly bring down the blur. to about right there. But actually, I'm going to bring it down even further. I'm going to type in the number 03.035 is what I want. All right. Okay. I'm going to close this out. And you can drag it still if you need to move it around for any reason. All right. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to stop the in-canvas render because it's pretty much close to what I want. Because that's pretty much how it's going to look when you actually do a render on it. So I'm going to stop the in-canvas render. Go to render. Actually, I need to save this design. Duh. Save, and I'll just call this pressure plate project. Okay. Save. Okay. Let's go to render. Still being saved. Give it some time. All right. Should be good to go. Render settings. Okay. You can save it to however you want. I don't use the cloud render, obviously, because you need to use credits for that. So I use local render, which is going to be on my PC. I don't want a transparent background. I actually want the environment background. And as far as width goes, uh, when I usually make thumbnails for YouTube, I usually use video which basically is 720 by 1280. Okay. And I click render, but for this, let's just go ahead and make a custom. I'm going to do this and make it. So the size of my monitor is 2560 by 1440. And I'm going to go ahead and click render. All right. And you'll see a box in the bottom left. And as it's rendering, you can click on it. It's going to basically tell you uh, how much time it's going to take to render this. So I click on that and you can watch it in real time. Okay, there's your finished rendering. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and download this. You can save it. We'll just call this pressure plate. Close this out. And that's it for your pressure plate. All right, that wraps it up for this video. I'll see you in the next one.